Throughout the Bible, especially in the New Testament, the devil, or Satan, is portrayed as the personification of evil. As a result of Middle Ages fiction, Filozov's Christian knowledge inspired the concept of the devil. However, this example makes a number of aspects of God's response to evil quite clear. The devil first appears on his own in the Hebrew scriptures, alongside God. Thereafter, God was brought into a direct discussion with evil. And God affects everything, including evil, to the extent that it has life and vigor. I shape light and create darkness, I manufacture wheel and create woe, I am the Lord, and I do all these things, according to Isaiah 45 verse 7. Satan is said to be as God's ally who puts the virtuous person to the test on God's behalf in the book of Job. The devil, the prince of the heavenly angels, who tempts some of the angels to rebel against God after being created by God and placed at the head of the heavenly armies, does not appear as God's enemy until Judaism of the Old Testament. Together with his rebellious friends, who revolted and became demons as a result, he is cast out of heaven. As the leader of the fallen angels, he carries on the battle against God's kingdom by trying to trick people into sinning, by obstructing God's plan of salvation, and by appearing before God as a blasphemer, and a complainant against the saints of God, in order to reduce the number of people chosen for God's kingdom. Satan is therefore God's creation, deriving both his existence and essence from God. He is both God's co-star in the historical tale of redemption and God's enemy, opposing God's plan for salvation. Due to the dualistic worldview of Zoroastrianism, the religion of the Israelites during their Babylonian exile from 586 to 538 BC in Persia, Satan gained features of a counter-god in late Judaism. In the writings of the Qumran groups, which were the preserved Dead Sea Scrolls, Belial, who is the angel of darkness and the spirit of evil, is portrayed as the enemy of the Prince of Lights and the Spirit of Truth. At the conclusion of the story of salvation, Belial, his angels, and everyone who serves him are judged as a result of the battle between the Prince of Luminaries and him. With this, worry, groaning, and evil come to an end and the rule of truth begins. The New Testament's depictions of the devil, Satan, Belial, and Beelzebub, all of whom are referred to as the enemy, clearly exhibit the characteristics of an anti-godly force. He is the one who works to thwart the coming of God's dominion through Jesus Christ's life, affliction, and death. He is also referred to as the prince of this realm, the wicked one, the tempter, the ancient snake, the huge serpent, and the deity of this world. Satan promises to give him all of this world's wealth if Christ accepts him as the final master. The Messiah Son of Man, who was sent into the world by God to undo the devil's works, is consequently his real enemy. He must, however, steal from others to give himself the appearance of individuality and corporeality since incarnation is not a possibility for him. By contrast to being the bringer of divine magnificence, Satan is the hater of beauty, the Misikalos, according to early church thinkers like Basil of Caesarea in the 4th century. Contrasted to this is Christ's altruistic love for humanity, who offers himself as an atoning sacrifice for the sins of humanity out of compassion for it. With the rise of Gnosticism, a loosely organized movement of Christian organizations that advocated for a transcendent God and a lesser, creation God, dualistic characteristics entered the Christian intuitive realm. Athenagoras, a second-century apologist, asserted that Satan, also known as the Black One and the spirit hovering over matter in the letter of Barnabas around the early 2nd century, is the one in charge of managing matter and its forms of appearance. Gnosticism and Manichaeism, a syncretistic religion established in the 3rd century by the Persian prophet Mani, are based on its dualistic components. Additionally, because of this idea, the entire sexual industry was demonized. When a woman engages in sexual behavior, she acts as the devil's persuasive instrument, which seems to be the devil's special area of temptation. Dualistic tendencies persisted in the church and had a significant impact on how Christians saw sin and atonement. 
Satan continues to represent sin as the rebel who rejects achieving godlikeness out of love for his original image and creator but instead longs for equality with God and puts love of self above love of God. Because the early church fathers saw Satan as Christ's enemy, they interpreted Christ's incarnation and disguise as a servant in a mythical way. By adopting this disguise, the Son of God hides from Satan his divine lineage. Christ is sometimes depicted in Middle Ages artwork as Satan's lure, which he eventually swallows because he believes Christ to be a regular human under his power. The Middle Ages added the notion that the devil is God's monkey, imitating God through false, evil creations that he substitutes for or rejects the divine creations. The character of Satan plays a key role in Christian historical consciousness as a result of the impact of John's revelation. The struggle between God and his demonic foe, who uses ever-evolving tactics to try to thwart God's purpose for salvation, is seen as the history of salvation. Giacomo Acconcio, a castle engineer, developed the idea of Satan's stratagems from this. The religious conflict at the center of the world's historical drama is this one. The devil is aware that his time is limited, as stated in Revelation 12 verse 12, and that his power in heaven has already begun to wane, which is why blow and counterblow occur at ever closer intervals in this battle between God and Satan. The possibilities of his effectiveness on earth are also limited by the Lord's second coming. Due to the intensity of his attacks on the elect of the kingdom in later times, Matthew 24 verse 22 states that God felt compelled to abbreviate the days of the last affliction. Otherwise, no one would be saved. Many of these traits were retained in the varieties of philosophy of religion practiced by German and Russian idealism. The 20th century Russian philosopher Nikolai Berdyaev, who shared this belief with the German philosophers Friedrich Schelling and Franz von Bader before him, claimed that the devil has no true personality and no real reality, but is instead filled with an insatiable hunger for reality, which he can attain by stealing reality from the people of whom he takes possession. Since the Renaissance, Christian theologians have tried to disprove the legends of Satan because they thought they were false, misleading, or inconsistent with Christian experience and philosophy. However, critics of this strategy, such as Russian philosopher Vladimir Solovyov and British author C.S. Lewis, have warned against it. They think that dispelling the devil's tales would be his most cunning attempt at self-masking and that dispelling them would be a surefire new approach to establish his existence. Jesus as the Son of God The early church's members' experiences of faith, when they recognized that Jesus was the incarnate and risen Son of God, was where dogmatic ideas about the nature of Jesus Christ first emerged. Their confirmation of his identification came from the disciples' account of Jesus' exalted status as the Son of God and exalted Lord, who now sits at the right hand of the Father and would return in glory to bring about the completion of the kingdom. Since the founding of the church, various interpretations of Jesus have coexisted. For instance, Jesus is the one upon whom the Holy Spirit descended during his baptism in the Jordan River and upon whom the voice of God announced, You are my beloved Son, from the skies, Mark 1 verse 11 in the Gospel of Mark. The various ways that Jesus Christ's personality has been interpreted. The principles revealed in Mark's Gospel served as the foundation for one of two early schools of thought regarding the nature of Christ. Approaches to Christology, or the doctrine of Christ, which originate from the Antiochian theological school have followed a particular line of interpretation, they begin with the humanity of Jesus and see his divinity in his awareness of God, which is based on the divine mission that was given to him by God through the infusion of the Holy Spirit. The Alexandrian school of thinking adopted the alternative viewpoint that the Gospel offers. According to John, Jesus Christ is a representation of the divine Logos, the Word, assuming human form. There, rather than the man Jesus being bestowed with a supernatural power, the divinity of the person of Jesus is seen as the result of the divine Logos, a pre-existing heavenly life, descending into the world. According to that theology, 
the Logos appeared in history by taking on a fleshly human form. As a result, there was rivalry between the theologies of Antioch and Alexandria on the most accurate interpretation of Jesus Christ. In addition to the latter two groups, the laity, monks, and modern clergy were significantly impacted by both schools. Thank you for watching.